World Health Organization statistics estimate 8 million people worldwide suffer from partial or total blindness caused by ocular disorders collectively described as limbal stem cell deficiency disorders. Stem cells are an important cell type in the body. They have the capability to replicate many times, producing identical copies of themselves. Additionally, when given the correct environmental cues, they can differentiate or change into other cell types. Limbal stem cells are a specialized cell type localized to the corneal limbus, the border of the cornea and the white part of the eye. These cells are responsible for maintaining the transparent layer of cells called epithelial corneal cells that form the corneal surface. Under normal conditions, if these epithelial corneal cells get damaged, the limbal stem cells will replicate and then differentiate into new corneal epithelial cells that can replace the damaged cells. Damage to the population of limbal stem cells in the eye renders it incapable of maintaining the highly specialized and transparent epithelial layer on the corneal surface, and as a result, damaged cells subsequently accumulate on the surface of the eye. To compensate for the deficiency in the limbal stem cell population, the conjunctiva, the vascularized, non-transparent mucous membrane covering the white of the eye, expands over the non-epithelialized cornea, leading to blindness. During transplantation, the surgeon removes the conjunctiva cells and places the carrier with the cultured limbal stem cells onto the eye. The limbal stem cells naturally reposition themselves in the correct location and regenerate the transparent layer of epithelial cells on the corneal surface. Amniotic membrane, the membrane that surrounds the fetus during pregnancy, is currently the clinical gold standard carrier for limbal stem cell transplantation. However, there are a number of concerns regarding its use. Firstly, Amniotic membrane is a non-standardized product and consequently has batch-to-batch -batch variability between sources that leads to inconsistent clinical responses. Secondly, being of human origin, there is a risk of transmitting potentially infectious viruses. Finally, there are ethical issues associated with gaining consent from donating mothers. The Tissue Engineering Group, based at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, specialises in fabricating collagen-based biomaterials for tissue engineering applications. To fabricate these collagen-based biomaterials, we dissolve collagen and glycoaminoglycans in acetic acid and blend them together to form a collagen gag slurry. Previously, these slurries have been used by our group to fabricate highly porous scaffolds that have shown success in bone and cartilage tissue engineering applications. In this study, we adapted our fabrication process to create highly transparent collagen-based films. Cells can then be applied onto the film and grown in the laboratory. After seven days in culture, these cell-coated films maintain a highly transparent appearance. Hopefully, Ongoing work to optimise the chemical and mechanical properties of these collagen films will ultimately translate to clinical success, restoring patients' vision.